Hare Krishna. So, uh, first of all, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Vancha kalpata rubhaya stakripa sindhu vevacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. So, I'm very glad to be among the Avatari Desh devotees today. It's a privilege to be in all of your uh, kind association. Thank you so much for inviting me uh, uh, to spend a little time with all of you here today. So, um, I have taken up the topic of um, Gopi Geet uh, as our today's discussion. So, I did it on a purpose because uh, uh, last uh, couple of uh, days uh, since this lockdown, I've been speaking on uh, very heavy topics like uh, a preparation for death and the, you know, how to be successful to write our final exam and the final exam that is the that is death and the how to overcome fear and hassle-free journey to uh, Goloka Vrindavan which has been like very very heavy topics but of course important topics because they are like our main course in our spiritual life so I thought that today we'll take something light like a desert like a you know a sweet pudding so I thought no heavy topic and just take Gopi Geet and um, also because um, the whole uh, a pastime of Gopi Geet, we can so much relate to now because of this lockdown. Because you see, the whole background of Gopi Geet is how uh, Krishna disappears from the Rasa Leela and he's not visible uh, to, the, to his dear most devotees, Gopis, and they're crying in separation for him. And which we can now a little bit relate to because we are also in separation of Krishna. <clears throat> With this um, lockdown, the devotees are not able to take darshan of their, of their beloved uh, deities at various temples across the world. They are inside, you know, confined in their houses. So they are also separated from Krishna. And they are also separated from devotees of Krishna because... Uh, the, the, the no more Sunday programs, get together, the chanting, the dancing, the taking of prasadam together. So devotees are definitely missing all this. So all the more we can relate to the Gopi Geet now because we can understand what the Gopis are um, going through. But the beauty about this Gopi Geet is the ending is very beautiful because in the ending Krishna does appear. He does appear from the bushes with his beautiful mischievous smile and his beautiful look with his peacock feather and pitambari clothes and he gives pleasure to the gopis. So similarly, we also have a hope that all this lockdown is going to soon end and Krishna is going to appear very soon and very soon everybody will be... Uh, back united with the with the devotees with the with the opportunity of having the darshan of the Sri Vigrahas uh, every day. So I thought Gopi Gita is an appropriate topic uh, for today's uh, uh, discussion. And uh, we, we all know how this uh, this whole uh, Gopi Gita background is. See this. Um, <coughs> Different uh, uh, cantos of Bhagavatam we know represents the different limbs of Krishna. Like the, the first and the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam represent the uh, lotus feet of the Lord. Uh, the, the third and the fourth canto represent his thighs. The fifth canto represents his navel. The sixth canto represents the Lord's uh, chest. The seventh and the eighth canto of Bhagavatam represent the Lord's arms. The ninth canto of the Bhagavatam represents the Lord's throat. The tenth canto represents his beautiful face. The eleventh canto represents his forehead. And the twelfth canto represents his, his, his head. But we all know that the beauty of anybody's face is by the way the person smiles. And that smile of the tenth canto is the Rasa Pancha Adhyaya. The, the, the tenth canto has uh, 90 chapters and out of which these five chapters represent the smile of Krishna, the Rasa Pancha Adhyaya, which is 29, 30, 31, 32 and 33. And today we will discuss on the 31st chapter, the chapter in the middle of this Rasa Pancha Adhyaya. So this is very beautifully narrated. Uh, the background of the story goes this way, is that how Krishna plays his flute on one very beautiful autumn night. 
and when he plays the flute the gopis are so attracted so they all uh, leave their household duties and they are running towards krishna in the deep forest and i thought that was also so important for all of us uh, householders because usually we have this complaint that we don't have time for krishna consciousness because we are so busy in this material world but sukhdev goswami takes the pain of explaining how the gopis were also very busy they were not free so he he goes on to explain in the in the chapter that how somebody was making the milk hot somebody was feeding the child somebody was serving the husband somebody was cooking something somebody was serving prasadam somebody was cleaning somebody was decorating oneself with some cosmetics so they were definitely very very busy but as soon as they heard krishna's flute they gave up everything and they ran towards krishna and i thought um, this was also something so relatable to the present situation that we are facing because um, krishna has been uh playing his flute and and calling us towards him but we always been complaining that we are busy unlike the gopis who voluntarily gave up the work to go to krishna we are not ready to give it up voluntarily so krishna um, forcibly making uh, putting us in such a situation where there is nothing else to do but to hear krishna katha i mean he is giving us the treatment which he gave to yashoda mata because when yashoda mata saw krishna got up from his bed we see that in the damodar leela she apparently didn't stop her churning she was still churning the butter and then krishna had to go and hold the churning rod and tell stop it you know look at me and i think that's what krishna did, did with all of us because all of us were so busy so busy with our own um, ma- material lives that krishna said look i stop all your material business now you look at me now you you worship me and now uh, even not only the, the the materialistic people even the devotees are very thankful because even though as devotees we do our sadhana but now we get all the more time to do our sadhana i have seen devotees sending me mails that mother ji i completed this many cantos of bhagavatam i have completed chaitanj i am doing this i am doing that everybody is getting now all the more time uh, to uh, think about krishna to remember krishna to hear about krishna so though voluntarily the gopis gave up but we didn't give it up voluntarily so krishna made this arrangement for us so then these gopis they just gave up all their work and they run towards krishna in the middle of the night and then uh, when they when they are in front of krishna uh, krishna makes a very innocent face and he just looks at them and ask what happened how come all of you are here in this time you know of the night and uh, all of you are ladies and how come you are come here uh, are you looking for somebody do you want somebody you know i mean very innocently as if he doesn't know why they have come and then um, when the gopis express that they have come to see him uh, krishna starts giving them a big discourse on stri dharma oh you are all ladies from respectable families i don't expect that you will come here in the middle of the night to meet a, you know a boy a man like me a, you know a boy like me and are you supposed to serve your husbands and your children and you're not supposed to leave your family like this and come and he just goes on with his whole lecture of stri dharma and the gopis are horrified because they are like we left everything just to come and meet him and here is krishna you know this is what he says and then uh, sukhdev goswami explains in detail how the gopis are scratching the ground with their toes and crying and their face becomes red and then uh, after some time they wipe uh, they wipe their tears and then they speak up and then they 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 speak up the philosophy there we understand that these gopis are not just ordinary village cowherd ladies they have so profound uh, philosophical knowledge sometimes um, we can't judge devotees by the way they dress or look is only when they open their mouth that we can understand like you see uh, sometimes we misjudge people if you see in shrimad bhagavatam even uh, devotees like kunti devi or um, we see um, even somebody like um, uh, abhimanyu's wife uttara uh, we never we never hear much about her but when 
actually a, a provocating situation comes in her life where ashwatthama uh, throws that arrow towards her womb uh, she goes to krishna for protection and says krishna who but you can protect uh, protect me and she doesn't go to her uh, her father in laws or anybody but krishna so at at those times we can understand that uh, they may be apparently looking like simple ladies but they have such profound knowledge so go because they they they, they sound like simple ladies maybe milking the cows or selling the butter and milk and curd but when they speak up in this context we will be amazed how they argue with krishna that you know our main dharma is to serve you you know you are our um, our master and with all our senses we out to serve you krishna and then when krishna is satisfied with all the arguments that they give krishna holds them by his hand and takes them uh, towards the bank of yamuna and that is where this uh, the, the the rasa leela begins the maha rasa leela and uh, the samacharya said that there were more than a few crores of go- gopis in those in that maha rasa leela on that particular night so then um, the, the krishna begins the rasa leela and krishna already gave them so much pain by by uttering uh, those words you know so that is why um, krishna gives them a special gift that night what he does is usually it is radha and krishna in the center who are dancing and the gopis are dancing around him but today krishna expands himself into various forms and every gopi is enjoying um to dance with krishna personally now what happens in the middle of all these things it says in shrimad bhagavatam that the gopis develop a little ego oh krishna is dancing with me looks like i must be really something special how come he is not dancing with radharani and dancing with me today so as soon as they develop this ego krishna disappears so he just takes radharani and he just disappears and then um, you know after some time when radharani also asks krishna that can you just um, a uh, carry me because I, i have a pain in my legs i can't walk anymore and then krishna also disappears from radharani's vision and it says here that even radharani developed ego but now um, this looks apparently very controversial because um, gopis and radharani is they are the devotees of the highest order so definitely they are they are bereft of all these anarthas of ego or enviousness so we understand uh, by the commentary of various acharyas that it is not the ego go or it is not the uh, ahankar that they develop because of which krishna leaves there is some other deeper reason behind it see what happens is when sukadev goswami was speaking shrimad bhagavatam he just had 7 days so he had to really hurry up and and give just the important points and and go next and go next because there's not much time there so he didn't expand but certain vaishnava acharyas have been so kind that they very nicely expand this is something like um, you know when we see something on the on the gps on the on the on a map we may see uh, this is uh, sharja or this is rasul khaima or this is abu dhabi but when we actually zoom in then we can see all the places with where the gold souks are or where is the lulu or what you can see everything if you zoom in right but if you zoom out you can just see a few dots here and there so similarly shrimad bhagavatam is just like those few dots here and there but vaishnava acharyas have very very a uh, kindly zoom zoom in you know different things what exactly happened on that fi- on that night so it was just that gopis were not having any kind of an ego it's just that they were thinking that we are not so advanced devotees how come krishna is dancing with us he is supposed to dance with radharani not with us so what should we do to make sure that krishna leaves us and goes to radharani so that is why they make a show they make a show of ahankar so that krishna leaves them and goes to radharani now what happens here is radharani uh, is with krishna but now her worry is that krishna has left all the gopis and he has come with me alone in, into this forest but what about those gopis they may be missing krishna so what should i do to make sure that 
you know everybody enjoys krishna's association so what radharani do, does is on purpose she delays she keeps diverting krishna's mind hey krishna look i want this flower go oh, krishna i want that flower so krishna goes ahead and gives her this flower that flower and radharani purposely slows down because she wants that by the time we keep walking slowly maybe the gopis will understand that krishna is missing from the ras and they will follow them into the forest and she keep, keeps doing that but still she doesn't find the gopis coming behind so finally she 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 just settles down under a tree and says krishna i can't walk anymore i'm tired so if you want me to go any further i guess you need to carry me but i'm not going to walk any further so what radharani expected is that krishna will say all right then even i'll sit with you and by that time the gopis will come but to the contrary of what she expected krishna said come i'll i'll, I'll take you on my you know my shoulders and then krishna bends forward and then he suddenly disappears and but then it's not rather on his ego or it's not that rather any got some kind of an ahankar it's just that her merciful nature that she wanted everybody should be enjoying krishna's association but when krishna just disappears and she feels very bad oh my god krishna even left me and this this must be so true because if rather any wanted krishna all by herself then we gaudiya vaishnavas would never worship rather any with krishna because if rather any had that nature that krishna is only mine and i don't want to share krishna with anybody then why would we even worship radharani we know that radharani wants krishna for everybody that is why we make sure that whenever we worship krishna we worship radharani so that radharani takes us to krishna because she is so merciful she doesn't want to enjoy krishna's association alone she always wants to give that association to everybody so now what happens is this gopikas are crying and crying and then as they are searching krishna in the forest they find radharani and now they are all the more sad because they were thinking so far all right krishna left the ras but at least he must be enjoying with radha but now they see even radharani is crying and krishna left her too and now the scene is is so sad i would say that radharani is crying and the gopis are crying and all of them are crying and then they are searching for krishna and as they go deep inside the forest the forest of vrindavan is very dense all the trees are very close by to each other and because there are kunjas you know the branches go down and go up and go down so there is no light moonlight coming inside it's very dark so the gopis think that you know even if we shout krishna's name uh, krishna won't be able to hear us so then they all decide to go to a clearing that is uh, to the bank of yamuna where there is some moonlight coming and there's a, there's a clearing for them to sit so then these uh, gopis and radharani they all sit there and then uh, starts our today's topic where they start this beautiful a uh, song of separation they sing uh, for krishna that oh dear krishna please come back uh, don't don't leave us like this please come back you know so it's very beautiful of course gopi geet is such a deep and elevated topic actually or all, all of us are, are not even i mean especially me we are not even on that level to understand but this is something like you know the the, the small children uh, when they don't have a digestion power when they are very young the mother she mixes the rice and dal and and she crushes the rice and dal with her hands in such a way that the rice becomes so soft that the children can easily swallow it similarly uh, our avashnava acharyas our param guru maharaj shri prabhu pad with his commentaries and other acharyas have 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 crushed it in such a way and have, with their purports and translation that at least we can a little bit try and understand the gopi geet but otherwise the topic is so high uh, for us to digest so here uh, the the gopi geet begins uh, chapter 31 it has around 19 slokas of how uh, the gopis um, one by one recite beautiful slokas uh, beautiful sanskrit verses uh, glorifying krishna and requesting him that krishna please come back so without much ado we will jump into this um, uh, gopi geet we will take one one uh, sloka i will recite and then we'll have a short discussion then move to the uh, next sloka gopyo uchuham jayati te dhikam 
जन्मना व्रजा श्रयात इंदिरा शाश्वदात्रही दयात दृश्यता दीक्षुतावकाई धृता सवाचिन्वते सी द मोमेंट वी रिसाइड दिस गोपी गीत वन अदर रीजन फॉर मी टेकिंग दिस गोपी गीत टुडे वॉज this gopi geet brings back such sweet memories of damodar kartik month because as uh, iskon devotees we are used to singing this gopi geet morning and evening during the marathon damodar month and especially if uh, all of if if any of you have visited vrindavan it is so beautiful in the evenings just after finishing the sandhya aarti and the damodar aarti all the devotees uh, gather in the pandal behind the krishna balaram temple and thousands of devotees together are singing this gopi geet and um, we are missing so much because um, we uh, at iskon vishakhapatnam had planned actually on this adhik mass uh, to go for a vrindavan yatra of course we had planned months ahead and we didn't know this was uh, this was all coming the corona thing but now we won't be able to go but uh, whenever we recite these you know we we get those sweet memories of vrindavan dham so here coming back to our first uh, sloka it says gopyo uchuha so uchuha is a uh, plural see like we see in bhagavad gita it says arjuno uvacha uvacha means one person is talking bhagavan uvacha but here it says gopyo uchuha because there are many gopis uh, singing so this gopi geet is not by one single gopi but it is by so many gopis uh, who are uh, singing one one verse and they are representing all the other gopis in fact if we read the commentaries by uh, jeeva goswami he also gives the detail of the name of the gopis who has sang which verse because um, he identifies it by the way it has been composed and by the incident that she is uh, mentioning of course we can't go into those details today uh, but um, he does mention all the all the details who must have sang it so here we see that the gopis uh, they begin this um, uh, gopi geet recitation in a very positive mood they say jayati te dikam they say o oh krishna jaya glory glory to this vrindavan dham has come uh, because you have appeared here so the gopis say the vrindavan dham was already glorious that's why you must have selected vrindavan to appear here but just because you have appeared in vrindavan this dham has become all the more glorious jayati te adhikam all the more glorious because you have appeared here and what has happened because you have appeared even lakshmi devi followed you uh, from vaikuntha she came here in uh, vrindavan why did she come here shruyata shruyata also means um, uh, it was uh, to serve you lakshmi devi has come here to serve you uh, if you have been to vrindavan you know there is a place called um, uh, bilvavan in vrindavan where it, where it it is said that lakshmi devi is still uh, meditating doing tapasya because she wanted an entrance into the rasalila which apparently she was um, denied so she is still worshiping she is still meditating in bilvavan to get access to rasalila of krishna so here the gopis are uh, uh, telling krishna that you know though you may be looking very handsome very beautiful in vaikuntha with all your aishwarya but your dear lakshmi devi has left that rupa of you yours and has come behind you in vrindavan and she is so impressed by the by your cowherd beauty different vaishnav acharyas comment uh, that the, the mood of the gopis is that uh, you are looking more beautiful as a cowherd boy and that credit is not yours but just because yashoda mata ha- decorates you so nicely with all those sandalwood pulp and those beautiful dots on your forehead that you look so handsome that lakshmi devi is so attracted by you that she comes here and not only that some rasika acharyas have uh, given commentary that the gopis are taunting krishna is that all your beauty is because of nanda maharaj because sometimes mm, only beauty doesn't work 
a beauty with confidence you know sometimes uh, those who are beautiful looking if they have a little bit confidence they look more beautiful and your confidence is coming because you are the son of nanda maharaj because nanda being the king of raja you are having um, pr- you are proud about it that my father is uh, you know the king of raja sometimes we see even with an ordinary people uh, they are so proud about their parentage my father is so and so he works in so and so company and they become so proud and with that confidence they look more beautiful so gopis are trying to say oh krishna you don't look beautiful just because you are beautiful your beauty is because the way yashoda dresses you your beauty is because you are son of nanda and they said because you look so beautiful here is uh, lakshmi devi who has left vaikuntha and she has come h- here running behind you in the and the, there are other uh, rasik acharyas who have commented that uh, the other uh, way that they have interpreted jayati te dikam is they say that the gopis are challenging krishna that jaya victory will be ours don't worry you have tried uh, uh, to defeat us in this game by hiding and you may be assuming that you know we you, we are simple cowherd girls and we will be defeated because we can't see you any more we will just go back home disappointed but no we we aren't going to go back we are going to win we will uh, get you back with our prayers and at the end we will see you so jaya will be definitely ours we are not disappointed and uh, the acharyas comment that that should be the attitude of devotees at no point of time or in any kind of provocating situation do the devotees uh, should be disappointed oh they they will be jaya definitely we will win and we will get krishna some day so says jayati te de kam go krishna we will win this game you know so definitely we will we will ultimately find you we will see you so jayati te dikam janma navraja shayat indira shashvadat rahe and then in the next line gopika say dayat drishyatam dikshutavakas oh krishna we been searching you in all the directions dayat means oh beloved we are searching you everywhere but we are not able to see you and then the gopis say something so emotional in the last line they say tvai drita savas tvam vichinvate o beloved krishna we are holding our life in our hand just because of you because we know you will come back and if at all we give up our life if you come back and you see our dead bodies you will be disappointed so just for your sake we are holding our life right this is so beautiful because Mm, it is very easy to give up one's life but to live in separation is very difficult see if you see in ramayan um, dashrath maharaj he just gave up his life in uh, separation of lord ram which is more easier we see that in case of um, uh, hadai pandit when nityananda prabhu left on the tirtha yatra hadai pandit just gave up his life in separation of the lord so it so the gopikas are trying to taunt that yeah it's easy to give up uh, give up the life in in your separation but to keep the life is very difficult so here we are keeping our lives together just because uh, we for you because if you come back and you 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 find us dead you will feel bad so oh krishna please come back we are somehow keeping our lives together so very very beautiful sloka going to the next sloka saradadasaye साधु जात सरसी जो दरा श्री मुषादृशा सुरतनाथ ते शुकदासी का वरद निघ्न तो ने so here the gopika say on the beautiful autumn night the lotus are looking so beautiful in the middle of the water reservoirs it says that my lord but your glance is more beautiful than this lotus in the winter night see sometimes um 
you know if somebody is very beautiful you know somebody just walks in you know a very beautiful person walks in and we are all looking at this beautiful person and then somebody who is more beautiful walks in then what happens is our our uh, focus will immediately shift to the person who is more beautiful now technically what happens is this more beautiful person has has stolen the beauty of this other person because now everybody's attention is on the more beautiful person so here the gopis are trying to say that the lotus flowers are beautiful my lord but you have stolen the beauty of those lotus flower in the winter night because your glance is so beautiful more beautiful than these lotus now these are not ordinary lotus sadhu jat that very fine quality very good quality lotus but even those lotus are not as beautiful as your glance and then the gopi say surat nath te shulk dasika oh my lord we are we are your maid servants you know shulk dasika see in the servants also uh, there are two types of servants uh, one servant is the one who takes um, salary but here the gopis say that we are uh, the servants who are working for you free of cost we are not even taking any salary from you so why are you doing this to us you know what is our expectation we don't want anything from you we have not come here for any desires we just came here to love you and we just wanted love in reciprocation but here you are you just uh, disappeared from our vision so here the gopis are trying to uh, say to krishna that looks like you want to play a game of hide and seek but look um, maybe we are, we are not even on your level to play that game with you we are very simple cowherd uh, village ladies so why not you play this game with somebody who is your equal maybe they can play with you we can't we just we just your maid servants please come back we want to see you you know don't play these games with us we are very simple ladies right so shulk dasika we we not we don't have any we don't want anything from you and i thought that was such a beautiful point for all of us to you know take a lessons in our life we may also think ourselves as a servants of the lord but the problem with us is we are the servants who want salary at the end of the month we want salary from the lord my lord I've, i i attend mangalarati i attend all the aartis i chant your 16 rounds i'm taking prasadam i'm reading bhagavatam look i'm doing so much service to you i'm giving charity i'm preaching i'm doing this so my lord where is my salary i want my salary so we want something from the lord we want that lord should keep us healthy wealthy fine our family fine this fine that means we are servants of the lord who want salary but gopi says we don't want salary we don't want nothing from you we just love you and then gopika say varad nignato varada the gopi say that you you are the god of love and we have heard that you give boons varad nignato you supposed to give boons but here we see on the contrary forget about giving us boons you just disappeared from our vision so you know krishna please come back don't do that and then the gopis say something something so deep they say neha kim vadha we are expecting that you will give us love but you are killing us why are you killing us and you know what kind of killing are you doing see if somebody kills you with a dagger with a with a knife all right you know you can show somebody you can complain to somebody look this person is killing me hurting me blood is coming out but the way you are killing me i can't even complain to somebody that that you are killing us by not being uh, you know not appearing in front of us we are dying please come back we are we are your simple maid servants we have not come here with a big list of material desires do this for my son give him this seat give me this money nothing we just want you my lord so please come back you know so this is what the gopis are um, requesting krishna oh krishna please come back now um, certain other vaishnav acharyas have given a very beautiful commentary to this verse where they say that this can also be compared to when the gopis are saying that you know um, uh, the krishna's beauty is uh, more than the beauty of this uh, a uh, water reservoir where there is this lotus flower in the middle in the autumn lit night uh, the acharya say that you can also compare this with the crystal clear waters as the crystal clear pure minds of the devotees of krishna where the lotus of their bhakti is growing 
and the devotees are praying that my dear lord i'm trying to grow this lotus in my heart but it needs your beautiful glance on me only then will it grow nicely so oh dear krishna please um, give your merciful glance on us so that sadhu jhat this beautiful fine fine quality of lotus of devotional service grows in our heart yeah and some other acharyas comment that um, why are the gopis talking about krishna's beauty here so he says apparently maybe the gopis want to say that <clears throat> usually you know even in this um, uh, in this um, uh, material world uh, whenever somebody is beautiful we expect that because the person is looking so beautiful maybe the person may be having a beautiful nature also of course um, uh to the contrary sometimes we see people uh look very beautiful but when we interact with them we see they may not have such beautiful nature and sometimes we see somebody may not be beautiful but they have very good nature but the thing with krishna is he is not only beautiful even his nature his swabhava is also very beautiful so the gopis are trying to tell him that look uh, because you look so beautiful we expected that you also have a nature which is very beautiful but here on the contrary we see you are cruel you are cruel you want to kill us by not being present in front of us so here the gopikas are praying krishna oh dear krishna please come back please come back we'll go to the next uh, um, sloka visha jalapyayat vyala rakshasa varasamaruta वैद्युतानलाषमयात्मजाषवते वक्षिताहु सो हियर द गोपीज आर बींग ग्रेटफुल टू कृष्णा at the same time at the same time they are saying krishna you were so kind to us were you not you protected us from so many calamities visha jalapya yad you protected us from the poisonous water of the kaliya serpent vyala rakshasa do krishna you protected us from the demon aghasur then he says varasamaruta you protected us from the rains of indra then says uh, marutat is uh, the wind storm created by trinavarta you protected us from that vaidyatanulat you protected us from the bolt of indra then vrisha from the bull aritrasur mayadana maya atmajat from the son of mayadana vyomasur oh my dear lord you protected us in the past from all these calamities and in future also you are going to protect us see because the uh, killing of um, vyomasur and uh, uh, killing of aritrasur will happen after this incident so there may be a question arise that how come the gopikas are talking uh, something which has not even happened so in the commentary vishwanath chakravarti thakur says that uh, the gopis know about all this because when gargamuni had come there he had predicted that krishna is going to you know kill these demons and they 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 know so here we know that gopis at one point they actually know he is the supreme personality of godhead they know that krishna is going to protect so gopis are saying that you protected us previously from all these calamities and you are going to protect us in the future also from all these demons so what is the problem to protect us in the present why are you killing us in the present you protected us in the past and in the future why not now is what the gopis are asking so uh, the the uh, gopis you know one one vaishnava acharya commented very beautifully on this he just took a little deeper meaning into this and he says when the gopi says visha jalapya ya they also trying to say that this material world is like a poisonous water because we are not using our senses in serving krishna what was kaliya doing he wanted to enjoy the yamuna just for himself he didn't want to share the waters of yamuna with the cowherd boys with the cowherd villagers he he poisoned it so similarly even we the the materialistic people we are using our senses just for our own sense gratification right so the the vaishnava acharya say that the gopis are saying that just now we learn the art of of uh, engaging our senses 
in your service just now we learned that art but now again you are disappearing from our vision and throwing us back into this uh, material world this poisonous water why are you doing that krishna you just lifted us up we were we were we were getting better day by day we were learning how to use our senses in your service and now you have again put us back by not being uh, appear not appearing in front of us so i thought this was also such a beautiful lesson for all of us because um, as devotees you know uh, what are we supposed to do to engage our senses in serving krishna see uh, the, the the meaning of the word gopi itself is so beautiful go means uh, senses and pivati pivat p means pivati one who drinks the nectar of krishna with all their senses of course what these um, gopis are saying here is just for uh, giving a lesson to us but they are so elevated they are their senses are always thinking about krishna in fact the the gopis have a problem the senses of the gopis they don't listen to the gopis they spontaneously get attracted to krishna and go towards the direction of krishna for us it's other way round our senses don't listen to us they spontaneously get attracted to material things and we have to beat them and, and somehow pull them back to krishna's service but here the gopis have a different kind of a problem they are saying krishna now we our senses spontaneously just go towards you and now you are not appearing in front of us so what do we do our senses have forgotten anything but you they don't know how to see anything but you they don't know how, uh, to talk about anything but you they don't know how to hear anything but your flute they don't know how to serve anybody but you so what to do now if you are not appearing in front of us what do we do these senses they don't listen to us so you can imagine how the situation of the gopis is it's it's like as if they were just now eating uh, uh, you know something uh, something sweet from a pot and they're just relishing it closing their eyes and the moment they open their eyes krishna is gone it's not there anymore in front of them so that is what the, the gopis are saying that krishna please come back you have protected us in the past and you're going to protect us in the future krishna please come back so going to the next uh, sloka न खलु गोपिका नंदनो भवाखिल अंतरात्मद्रे विखन सार्थि तो विश्वगुप्त This is very, very beautiful sloka. Here the gopis are uh, telling Krishna, we know who you are. We know you are not just an ordinary boy uh, born in the house of Nanda and Yashoda. You are a an akhila dehi naam you are present in everybody's heart antaratma dekh you are there in everybody's heart krishna you are the supreme personality of god had you are not just an ordinary boy born in nanda's house <coughs> now why why do the gopis mention this because suppose uh, krishna uh, may next day morning krishna may tell them oh i was just tired you know in the middle of the ras leela my legs were paining so i just went home and i slept uh, oh you people were searching for me is it oh you were crying for me oh i didn't knew that i was just taking rest i didn't knew that he may say that you know just like um, in 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 the normal world you know sometimes when people want to avoid some call you know they'll simply say oh i didn't see your call you called me acha i didn't see your message my phone was charging or they'll say oh my uh, my phone was not with me i didn't see you did you did you call me you know how the sometimes people make excuses if they don't want to take your call so similarly krishna make make excuse you know that oh i didn't know you were crying for me is it i don't know i was just sleeping you know i went back home after the uh, ras leela so the gopis are saying that don't you make that innocent face in front of us we know very well 
that you are in everybody's heart and now that we are we are crying for you you know very well we are crying for you because you are there in everybody's heart you are listening to us right now so don't you make that excuse you are able to understand our pain that we are going through uh, because of separation so please come back don't don't be unfair so akila dehi naam antaratmadek so then krishna may say oh is it oh is it i mean everybody's heart is it so why did i why did i come out then so the gopis are answering you came out because brahma prayed he says that vikhana sarthi to brahma prayed for you that please come and save your devotees that is why you came and for saving your devotees vishva gupta ye for the for the protection of this whole universe so why are this gopi is mentioning that because they just want to remind krishna that you came for protection of this whole world so aren't we part of this whole world so why aren't you protecting us we are also part of this world krishna kindly protect us also and then they say sakha udeivan this is so important udeivan see they very well know that krishna is not born he appears so they use this word udeivan you know just like the sun appears and disappears krishna you appeared you know so they very clearly say that and then they say sakha see such apparent controversy in the in the beginning they say you are par, you know you are like parmatma in everybody's heart you are god you are this you know you are an, you know antaratma you know what is happening and then in the last line they say sakha so it is something like emotionally blackmailing krishna all right you may be god we know that but you are our sakha right you are our friend right so why are you doing that to us you know we, friends don't do that why are you giving us pain just come back you know see the the acharyas comment that um uh the the gopis they very well know that krishna is the supreme personality of god had but they don't allow uh, krishna's aishwarya to come in between their relationship so so the acharyas comment that just like uh, in the night you can see the stars very clearly in the night but as soon as the sun rises in the morning you don't see the stars but that doesn't mean that the stars are not there the stars are very much there but because the power of the rays of the sun the sun is so bright that you can't see the stars similarly it's not that the gopis don't know that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead <clears throat> but the gopis love for krishna is so high so bright that the aishwarya of krishna is is ignored they don't even consider him as god they just think uh, krishna as their own what do the cowherd boys uh, say to krishna oh krishna tumi ami sama you and us are equal don't think you are somebody great okay this is how they talk to krishna right even when the uh, when sometime krishna tells them you look look how i lifted the govardhan hill and the cowherd boys they remind krishna hey don't forget it was because of us you know we also helped you remember when you were holding the govardhan we were also holding the holding it with the help of some sticks it's not you alone and then there's other cowherd boys who will say see you did all that only because of yashoda mata she fed you so nicely butter that's why you had the strength to lift govardhan so no matter how much krishna tries to convince them that i am god for them krishna is their own krishna is somebody uh, their own N- nothing bigger than them right in in gujarati uh, there is one this um, <clears throat> a very beautiful bhajan where the gopis are uh, doing ninda stuti they are teasing krishna they say <clears throat> nanda na kuvarata me nanda na kuvarata me bahu rang rasiya amare karane lala vraj maye vasiya nanda na kuvarata me na karo badhai mota thaya maru ma khana khai very beautiful gujarati bhajan where the gopis are saying hey look don't don't show off too much okay you are here today in vrindavan just because of us and don't you try to show us that you have lot of strength all this that strength mota thaya this this you know you have grown up just because we fed you with butter 
our butter has given you all this strength of whatever this uh, things you try to show us by killing this demon that demon it's all because of the butter that we fed you so don't you try to act smart in front of us so no matter how much krishna tries you know just like you see the the the, the vips they may be sometimes very big uh, outside but when they come home the family members they never respect them even they may be great film stars or celebrities in the outside world similarly vrindavan is krishna's home so no matter outside people may be chanting govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajami o krishna you are sarva karana karana you are adi purusha but in vrindavan uh, very sad nobody respects krishna at vrindavan nanda maharaj says krishna go and get my slippers and then krishna just takes the slippers of nanda maharaj and puts it on his head and walks 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 to nanda maharaj so in vrindavan krishna is their own child you know so here the gopis this is sakha you are our friend why are you doing that to us krishna just come back you know just please come back so here he says akhila dehi naam you are there in everybody's heart now somebody may question if krishna is in everybody's heart and if krishna is in, is in the heart of the gopis then why are the gopis speaking the prayers aloud krishna knows he is in the heart he knows the gopis are suffering they'll come back right sometimes even when we are um, preaching you know people argue why do you iskon devotees do so much show off the uh, chanting and then going to temple why all that krishna is in our heart na so krishna understands what we require we don't need anything but the whole point is he definitely he understands nothing wrong in that but the whole point is when we when we tell our prayers aloud when we talk to krishna when we speak to krishna we develop a relationship with krishna it is so important see prayer is not only uh, a mechanism whereby you just want to uh, you know uh, express your desires to krishna but it is a medium for building a relationship with krishna you want to build a rela- and how do you build a relationship with somebody even in this in this material world if you want to have a relationship with somebody what do you do you need to uh, talk to the person regularly take prasad with the person associate with the person if you regularly do that you will get an attachment with the person right so similarly if you want to increase your attachment to krishna you need to talk to krishna you should speak your prayers aloud have a relationship with him i remember as um, as a young girl in our house we had the system that every day we talk to krishna we share with krishna everything even if we buy a pencil a frock a, a compass box we used to go to the puja room and show krishna uh, we used to talk to him this was how my day was today in the school this is what happened that is what happened and that is the way we develop a relationship with krishna because krishna wants a relationship with us he just doesn't want that you just chant some purusha shukta shri shukta and you just walk away he loves when you talk to him when you have a relationship with him he loves when the gopis do ninda stuti when they call him o oh, thief when they call him o oh, kaliya o oh, black one you know so he loves that that sweet um, exchange loving exchange with his devotees so if we want to have a relationship with krishna definitely we need to pray aloud we need to express our prayers so here even though he is a akhila dehi naam but gopis are uh, saying out aloud krishna please come back and then the final point the gopika say you appeared in satvatam kule you have appeared in a in a dynasty of pious people you have appeared in the dynasty of the vrishnis the satvatam kula so why are the gopis mentioning that because you see the the gopis they know very well if they say krishna you are the son of nanda then krishna may say no no i am son of vasudev and devaki and if they say look you are the son of vasudev and devaki then krishna may say no no i am the son of nanda and yashoda so here they are gopis are being very safe they saying satvatam kule satvatam also means the satvatam dynasty and it also means the dynasty of pious people so here the gopis are saying hey krishna you belong to a pious dynasty now why are the gopis reminding him of that because the gopis want to tell him that look the people who belong to the pious dynasty what do they do they they have certain duties you know what the duties of kshatriyas are right they have to protect women 
they have to protect young children, they have to protect old men, they have to protect brahmanas, cows. So they are reminding that Krishna, you belong to such a pious dynasty, you are supposed to protect women. But what about, what to speak about protection? You are killing women who have left their family and everything and have come to you, you are killing them. So, oh Krishna, don't kill us. You are from a good dynasty, bring a good name to your dynasty, come back and protect us, right? We'll go to the next uh, uh, sloka. Vira chita bhayam vrishni dhuryate charanami yusham samsrite bhayat karasaro ruham kantakamadam Sira Siddhi Hina Shri Karagraham So now Krishna may ask the gopis, Oh, I'm very impressed. You're speaking very nicely. So, okay, if I come back, what do you want me to do? What, what should I do after coming back? What is my job? So the gopikas are answering this question. They say, Krishna, what we want is come back and put your lotus hand on our on our head. And then here it's a very, very important uh, point that the gopis make. They say that those who have taken your shelter, my Lord, you give them abhayam, fearlessness. So I thought that was a very beautiful point because see, in this world, there are many kinds of fears. There is this um, fear of health. Yeah, like now everybody around the world is fearful of this, uh, of this um, uh, disease, right? So there is fear of health. There may be fear of wealth. What's going to happen after the lockdown opens? The, uh, some of the, the jobs may be laid off, you know, the financial problem. There may be economical fear, financial fear, fear of relationships. Sometimes there is some problem between relationships. There is, there is some health problem. So there are so many kinds of fear in this world. But here what the gopis are talking about are not the temporary fears. What they are talking about is samsriter bhayat. They said that my lord, when somebody takes a shelter of you, then they are relieved, relieved of samsriter bhayat. See the thing is, even sometimes as devotees, we think Krishna should protect uh, us from this problem, that problem. But what actually Krishna tries to do is not only protecting us from the temporary problems, but what he wants to do is he wants to protect us from samsrite bhayat. Samsrite bhayat is the bhaya or the fe fear of uh, staying back in this material world. And that is a very big fear. You know, the health fear or the financial fear or the social fear or the relationship fears, they, all these are temporary fear. But the, but the real fear is that if we don't go back to Krishna, if we stay back in this material world, if we keep on taking birth, life after life, if we are stuck in this cycle of birth, death, old age and disease, this is a very big fear. Samsriter bhayat. And devotees, they have another kind of fear. It's not that devotees are uh, um, not fearful of these temporary fears. But then they have a bigger fear. They have a bigger fear. Now what is the fear? See, Adi Devik, Adhyatmik, Adi Bhautik miseries, even devotees suffer. It's not that and 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 when devotees suffer from these uh, from these Adi Devik, Adhyatmik, Adi Bhautik miseries, uh, they have a different kind of fear. Their fear is that uh, these disturbances will take them away from their service of Krishna. Let's say for example if it's going to rain, then devotees are fearful, oh, it will rain, it will hamper our Rathyatra. So they have that kind of fear. Or let's say if somebody has some disease, oh, they are fearful that, oh, if I have fever or if I'm not feeling well, I won't be able to serve Krishna. Or let's say if they have, you know, uh, any other person causing trouble to them, you know, they may fear that this may be an obstacle to my service to Krishna. So definitely, devotees do face Adhyatmik, Adhidevik and Adhibhautik troubles and they have a fear that this will be causing an hindrance uh, in their spiritual lives because uh, even the uh, devotees are not bereft of these miseries. We, we are seeing that. Everybody is uh, facing, is facing it. Like Prabhupada on many 
occasion said that uh, you know when one devotee was asking Prabhupada that Prabhupada uh, uh, how come you know the mosquitoes bite you you're also pure devotee you are a pure devotee so how come you know mosquitoes bite us we understand but how come the mosquitoes are biting you and Prabhupada very humorously say that uh, uh, mosquitoes uh, don't show distinction between pure devotees or uh, you know materialistic people uh, they are uh, uh, you know same for everybody so um, definitely devotees also suffer but uh, the thing is uh, for all these sufferings uh, you can't do much about it because uh, you are destined to suffer according to your previous karma you can't do much about it you can't send a um, sms to indra that uh, can you stop the rain today we have rathayatra it's not going to work out uh, these uh, are beyond our um, uh, jurisdiction we can't do anything about it but there's another kind of fear which the devotees are very much afraid of and that is the fear of distraction the fear of temptation the fear of uh, getting tempted uh, to materialistic um, objects yeah the fear of um, getting attached uh, uh, and, you know to material, materialistic relationships that is what the devotees are afraid you know? so that is what is there in, in their mind that how to protect oneself from those distractions because the other sufferings that you are going through is your past bank account but this time in this lifetime after coming into Krishna consciousness when we get distracted and and, and um, and drive our attentions to different other material objects what and and engage ourselves into uh, different other anti devotional activities or non devotional activities what we are doing is we are simply opening a new bank account with maya devi and the moment we engage in these activities then uh, maya devi sends us a message thank you for opening an account with us you are our new valued customer please start making deposits is the message Maya Devi sends us and we don't want to open a new account with Maya Devi because we have our previous accounts with her which we are uh, still trying to clear and we don't want to have a new account so more than anything this is what the devotees are afraid of you know that they may get distracted or they may they may be taken away from Krishna uh, due to certain situations or circumstances so here the gopis say that but Krishna those who take shelter of you, they are uh, given relief from all kinds of fear. That means, as devotees, you know, we may have a question. Yeah, we understand that distractions will take us away from Krishna, but who will protect us from those distractions? In Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th Canto, there is a very beautiful sloka, 11th Canto, uh, chapter 2, sloka number 37. They said, those who are intelligent people, if they take shelter of Krishna, under the guidance of a spiritual master, then definitely they will be uh, getting abhayam, they will become fearless, Krishna will protect them. So what we need to do as uh, devotees is take complete shelter of Krishna and his devotees. Only Krishna can help us to, um, to not be distracted. That means we have to pray. Like Prabhupada always said that, where we going wrong uh, as devotees, uh, sadhu, savdhan, where, where devotees go wrong is sometimes they are not sufficiently afraid of maya. Right? Sometimes our, our situation is like that of a king, you know. There was once a king uh, who was asked by a doctor not to take mangoes. The doctor said to the king, don't take mangoes because you will die if you take mangoes. The so king said, fine. So one day the king and the minister, they went for hunting. After that, they were very tired. So the king said to the minister, let's take rest under a tree. So he said that, what's the problem? Uh, the doctor said not to eat mango, but definitely we can sit under the shed, uh, shade of the mango tree. And then the minister, he says, fine. And after some time, one mango falls on the king's head. And the king immediately holds the mango. And the minister says, my lord, be careful. The king says, come on. The doctor said, don't eat the mango. I'm just holding it. And then the king brings the mango next to his nose and the minister is, my lord, be careful. And the king is like, come on. The doctor said, don't eat the mango. I can smell the mango. I can touch the mango. Nothing wrong in that. And then the king starts eating it. And, and the minister is like, what are you doing? And the king says, come on. The doctor said, don't eat the mango. I'm simply tasting the mango. 
and then he ends up eating the mango and i think this is what happens in our lives too sometimes we become so overconfident as devotees but we need to be so careful we have to be very careful and be far away from those uh, stimulus which may bring back our old habits which we have given up after coming into devotional life we have to be so careful so who can help us in that only the association of devotees and the lord's mercy because we have a war with maya and who is maya maya is lord's own energy so definitely if we want to fight with the lord's energy we need lord's energy because maya is lord's energy so we need lord's uh, this energy to fight with lord's that energy we need lord's help only lord can help us so if lord protects us that is why shila prabhupada said that we should sufficiently pray to krishna every single day that my dear lord please protect me from distractions you know there's so many distractions uh, by your servant maya devi in this world i need your constant uh, protection and 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 i want to make a point here and if we have sufficiently prayed then we have full rights to even fight with krishna if he doesn't protect us from maya like i have given this um, I, i don't know i don't know if you know this uh, beautiful story of uh, vamsi das baba ji maharaj vamsi das uh, baba ji maharaj uh, he was from a fisherman family so right i mean uh, so once it so happened that um, he was uh, uh, you know he is such a pure such a pure devotee you know always serving the lord with lots of love and affection and serving the serving his deities you know gor nitai and gadadhar very nicely but once it so happened that he was sitting outside his hut and there was one lady who was selling fishes now in 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 calcutta in west bengal it's very common so she was selling fishes and she comes to this baba and ask you know baba you want some fishes now he's a devotee so he doesn't eat fish but uh, when she puts her basket down for a fraction of second vamsidas baba ji maharaj looks at those fishes and he's like wow good quality ones because see he's from a fisherman uh, family background you know so he knows very well which are the good quality fishes for eating which are good for what so just for a fraction of second he says oh looks like you know they're good quality fish and that's about it and and very next moment he's done with that and the lady walks away but then he feels very upset that how come my lord didn't protect me even for a fraction of a second why did i even get that bad thought so he just goes inside his hut and takes his deities ties them with a rope puts them inside the water in the river and one one end of the rope he holds and he stands outside on the bank of the river and he abuses and um, and and uh, uh, uses swear words for the lord and says this is what you did to me i left my house my family everything and so uh, sincerely worshiping you and you bring this kind of a dirty thought in my mind this is what you do to me you deserve this punishment i'm not going to take you out from the water he just drowns the deities inside the water and and holds them you know with one uh, one uh, end of the rope and said i'm not going to bring out, bring you out from the water unless you say sorry you're not going to do that again are you going to do that again are you going to bring those dirty thoughts in my mind again tell me tell me he's swearing words to the lord and then finally he takes the lord out from that now imagine he must have worshiped the lord so sincerely that here he has a right to fight with the lord how dare did you bring that thought in my mind so at least of course of course um, we are not on that level to fight with the lord but at least if we have sufficiently worshiped the lord then we can ask him that my lord i'm sincerely praying day in and day out how come you're not protecting me from distraction please protect me please protect my mind see nowadays we are talking about social distancing what about social distancing in our minds we are having physical distance fine what about distancing in our mind from materialistic objects from materialistic sense enjoyment thoughts we have to be so careful so if we have sufficiently prayed then we have right krishna will become obliged to save us to protect us like like he like he did in the case of of bhishma we see how um, 
uh, Bhishma, when he was lying on the on the arrows uh, in the bed of the arrows, and at that last moment, leaving his body, because he had worshipped Krishna so sincerely all his life, at the end of the life, very confidently he could instruct Krishna. He did not request Krishna. He instructed. He ordered Krishna. He said, "Krishna, I'm just going to leave my body." Uh, just within a few moments and uh, make sure you are there stand right in front of me don't move i want to see your beautiful face which was smiling and i want to see your form with those uh, four hands so kindly be there in my vision he didn't request he ordered and how could he do that how could he order krishna because he earned it he earned it he had worshiped krishna so much all his life that he earned this privilege to order krishna oh krishna don't go away from my vision so he sings this very very beautiful sloka he says sadeva devo bhagavan pratikshamam kalevaram yavadidam hinomi aham very beautiful. He says, Sadeva Devo Bhagavan Pratikshata. Hey, wait for me, my Lord. Just wait for me. When when I'm going to Kalevaram, when I'm going to give up this body, just be there. And how I want to see you? your beautiful face which is like um, smiling and on on my patha you know on my in my vision uh, with chatur bhujam because that is a form bhishma like so he wanted to see lord in the chatur bhujam form so he could do that to the lord because he earned it so as devotees you know we must take shelter of krishna and guru and devotees and we should uh, do our sadhana in you know, so sincerely, so sincerely that Krishna will be obliged, will be obliged to be around, will be obliged uh, uh, to to be around when we give that final exam at the time of leaving our body and he'll be there holding our hands and, uh, and, and speaking out his names in our ears as he promised, as it's mentioned in Garuda Puran that if somebody worships Krishna whole their life, at the end of the life, Krishna tells his name in the year of that devotee. And even if that devotee dies in a way uh, where he didn't have an opportunity to remember Krishna, Krishna himself comes and tells his own name in the year of that devotee. So here, uh, the gopis say that samsriter uh, bhayat krishna you protect uh, those who have taken your shelter you protect them uh, from samsriter bhayat they become uh, fearless fearless and then the last they said oh uh, dear lord please come and put your lotus um, hand on our uh, on our head you know so this is a very very important sloka very very uh, beautiful uh, sloka that we must take the uh, shelter of uh, Krishna and uh, somehow or the other uh, try to come out of this um, uh, cycle of this repeated uh, uh, re changing the bodies. Um, our soul has been changing the bodies from so many lifetimes. So we have to take shelter of Krishna. Just like Shankaracharya says, we don't want uh, Punarapi Jananam Punarapi Maranam Punarapi Janani Jathare shayanam iha sansare khaludustare kripaya kripaya pare pahi murare. Please um, deliver us from this uh, material world. We don't want to take uh, birth again and again. Please uh, give us your uh, shelter and a constant um, association of your uh, devotees. So um, I think uh, I'm. Uh, too much over time i will end it here so we had this discussion up to text five and um, you can you can go home and you know at at, at home you can read uh, the rest of the uh, texts they're very 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 beautiful with very very profound uh, uh, meaning um, thank you so much and uh, sorry for going a little over time thank you very much Hare krishna Hare krishna All right. 
all right so a very 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 nice and very very practical question that we are in this material world and this material world is definitely uh, full of uh, fear and anxieties am i audible yeah am i audible all right so this material world is full of fear anxieties um everything is we are so vulnerable we don't know when what is going to happen so how can somebody sincerely do sadhana now let me tell you one very beautiful story in this regard you know once somebody went and asked this question to sant ekanath you know you, you have heard about ekanath is a very famous saint, saint in maharashtra just like we have narsim mehta in gujarat and we have you know different say uh, tukaram we have sant ekanath so somebody went and asked ekanath that um, you know uh, you are such a pure soul and uh, how come you are not tempted to do any sinful activities and how come you are able to live such pure life he was glorifying the saint so you know sant ekanath suddenly became very grave and he said stop all that glorification let me tell you something you are going to die within 7 days so go home and make some preparation for your own death and stop glorifying me and wasting your time so immediately this devotee became very nervous sir are i don't know i'm going to die within 7 days okay thank you swami ji for informing me so he goes back home and he makes all the preparation and he he um, gets his insurance policy together one day goes in depression that he's going to die and second day he makes this son will get this property my wife will get this he makes all the arrangements you know he gets so busy and then he starts his chanting and because now he's going to die within 7 days Now as 6 days pass on the 6th day Sant Ekanath goes and visits this devotee you know visits his house and says so hello how are you everything is fine so he said fine means i am going to die so you see i'm just making all the preparations and then sant ekanath asked him a question so uh, can i know how many sinful activities you committed last 6 days so this man is like why will i commit to sinful activities uh, in the 6 days i'm just going to die you know another uh, you know in 7 days you told me that so i don't have even time of committing sinful activities i'm not even thinking about sinful activities i'm only thinking about how you know i can i can worship i can chant i can read because i have very less time so then uh, sant ekana said just like you are saying that you just have 7 days how can you even have time to commit any other sinful activities similarly it's not the question of 7 days or 70 years a person who is always conscious that the death is you know any time going to approach him will not waste his time in anything he'll be conscious now the problem is definitely we are facing fear and anxieties but if we are always conscious of the bigger fear you know i always mention th- this in my classes the biggest challenge is to keep the biggest challenge as the biggest challenge as devotees the biggest challenge that we are facing is we are not able to keep the biggest challenge of our life that is how to go back to goloka as our biggest challenge we are so busy in sorting out our smaller 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 challenge and we are forgetting about the bigger challenge that we have to uh, take up seriously in this uh, human form that we have got so if we are always conscious see, the problem is um if 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 somebody has put a put a dragger next to our uh, throat we will be so careful in moving our neck so the thing is that death is also as close as that but the only thing is it's invisible we can't see that that is why we are giving so much important to the fear and the anxieties of this world but if we are always conscious and how will that consciousness come and that consciousness will come if we are always reading shrimad bhagavatam taking shelter and association of devotees then we will be in constant remembrance of that fear of 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 that fear samsriter bhayat that oh my god i may just stay back in this world i may keep changing some more bodies you know my soul will go on from this body to another body not again not again and if we are constantly constant uh, conscious of that then these fear and these anxieties will become see this is something like like let me tell you sometimes you know you take your child for vaccinations now when you when you put a vaccine to your child it's painful because when those injection goes into the arm it hurts but even though it hurts you are not bothered because you know it's for the greater good even if it hurts now it's going to protect your child from other diseases similarly when we face fear and anxiety in this world we should understand that it's for our greater good these are very um temporary inconveniences for permanent convenience because the problem is 
even in this world, if we don't have any fear and anxiety also, we are not going to remember the Lord. That is how we are made up of. If everything is fine and settled, we will get permanently settled in this world. We will never even remember Krishna. We will think we are, we are fine. We are just fine. But because there are constant fear and anxieties in this world, they give us an opportunity to remember Krishna. That is why Kunti Devi, what she says in her Prathana, I want Vipada. I want problem. Because when there is problem, then uh, there is a greater chance to remember Lord. Right? Dukha mein sumiran sab kare, sukha mein kare na koi. It's very difficult to remember the Lord when everything in your life is so beautiful. But when there is a little problem here and there, then you have more opportunity to remember Krishna. So, as devotees, we need to uh, convert this fear and anxiety also. We should take it very positively that this is something Krishna is sending us as a reminder that, look, you don't belong to this material world. This is not your place. You need to come back. If he will not send us these reminders, we may settle here. So yes, there will be fear and anxiety, but we can take shelter of the devotees, take shelter of Bhagavatam, scriptures. When we read the life of the other devotees also, we get so much inspiration. You see in the scriptures, never once you will see any devotee's life that he is born and then he grew and then he did very nice service of the Lord and then he died. No, you'll always see that this devotee had that problem, this problem, that problem, this problem, but somehow he managed to uh, worship Krishna, somehow he managed to do service to Krishna, right? You see in the life of Mirabai, she always had problem. You see the life of Tukaram, he was poor, he had problem. You see in the life of Sudama, he had problem. You see the life of Jaidev Goswami, he had problem. Life of Narsing Mehta, he had problem. You see the life of Pandavas, they had problem. The life of Draupadi, she had problem. Kunti Devi, she had problem. Srila Prabhupada, he had problem. Eh, tell, me, tell me the name of one devotee in the history or anywhere you pick them, pick it, pick it up. Everybody had problem. But the beauty is devotees, even in that situation, they are converted as a, as a medium or a, as a chance or an opportunity to remember Krishna more intensely, more intensely. Of course, it is easier said than done, but it can, it, it can be made easy if we take association of devotees. Just like, see, the whole world is suffering uh, because of this corona situation. More kirtan, more opportunity to hear, hear, more virtual sangha with devotees, more of reading. So devotees in every situation, um, they will try to uh, convert it to their advantage. What do you say, the, uh, the, the make a best deal of a bad bargain? Is it something like that, you know? Just, just make, a, uh, make a good deal of whatever situation we are in and take advantage of it. Of course, I could have elaborated in the question answer, but I, I don't want to make it very, very, very long. I hope this answer helps you. Yes, please go ahead, little master. Yeah, so 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 you want me to answer in Telugu? <laughs> so his question is that uh, how come Bamsi Das Babaji treated the deities like that? Yeah, so just like you had this question, many of the devotees at that time had this question, and that is why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur at that time told the devotees for briefly, uh, don't associate with Vamsi Das Babaji Maharaj because um, we are not on that level to understand uh, the the way he deals with. Um, uh, the deities because for him his deities are like his own children please mute yourself for him his deities are like his own children so sometimes he punishes them sometimes he scolds them sometimes he doesn't give them food it once happened that Vamsi Das Babaji Maharaj went out for Madhukari and somebody uh, broke inside his hut and stole the, uh, the cups in which he makes offering for the deities and when he came back, he was very upset and he told Gornitai, you are the owners of the house and you have not taken care and somebody has stolen the cups. Till you bring the cups back, I'm not going to cook for you. So he punished them. 
and then the deities were like you know no food and hungry so by evening the thief who had whoever had stolen a uh, lord made sure that the thief brought the cups back and put it in vamsidas baba ji maharaj's hut again so these deities they have these devotees they have such relation with the lord they fight with the lord they scold lord they punish lord like the gopis like yashoda mata they have a relationship with the lord so at that level yes they can they can do that they can do that yes i ha- i hope it answers you sab krishna krishna